This is another opto isolator video. You can go through my video list and find an older one that I put out for just regular DC circuits. This one here is going to be for alternating current circuits. And I'm going to show you the typical usage of it. And this is what one looks like right here. The regular opto isolator in the previous video I made just had four pins, two on each side. and this one has three on each side alright this is how this one works basically you want to isolate one side of the circuit from the other side of the circuit usually they will use this when there's high voltage involved because you don't want high voltage from this side somehow finding its way into this side of the circuit now how it works is just like the other one there's an LED inside this chip right here alright and what it does it requires between 1.2 right over here, all right, between 1.2 and 1.4 volts DC on average, and anywhere from 20 to 50 milliamps of current. So you have to choose the proper size resistor. So if you're using a 6 volt battery, or a 9 volt battery, or a 12, make sure you have the appropriate size resistor to limit that current to 20 to 50 milliamps. And how it's going to work is when this side triggers, this LED will come on shining a light onto this side of the circuit which is basically like a mini little triac in here allowing the alternating current to conduct to, to have the loop closed these are typically rated for only around a hundred milliamps you don't want more than a hundred milliamps passing through this side of the opto isolator between pins four and six because it's only rated at a hundred and most of them are rated right around that amount so in this example right here, you're going to have a triac, and the gate goes here to that pin. Uh, you have your line, 120 volts, flowing through your load to the top of the triac, which would be uh, terminal 2, into the resistor, because you've got to limit the current going into the gate. You have to check the spec sheet to find out how much current is required for this particular triac that you're using. And you also have to keep in mind this only allows 100 milliamps to be used, so make sure you choose a sensitive gate so it doesn't require that much to trigger it. And on this side of the triac, which is T1, that goes to neutral, and then you just ground both sides. The negative here goes to ground, and the neutral to ground. It this works very well, and there's a lot of other uses besides this triac circuit that you can use this for.